What's going on everyone? Are you still looking for that perfect one-stop shop for all things pop culture? You know, that one place where you can hear hot takes about superheroes, Star Wars, video games, and more? Well, fear not. Bridging to Geekdoms is the place for you. A podcast that focuses on the current rumors, scoops, and controversies within the pop culture world. Hosted exclusively on the Spoilerverse Network, you can find us on any one of your favorite podcatching apps, YouTube, and at Spoilerverse.com. So don't miss out on the excitement. Find us and subscribe now. And today, I want to talk about something I think Star Wars really needs to focus on doing and hopefully give a little idea to Mr. Dave Filoni and Lucasfilm and giving us, the fans, something that I think we've all been wanting in some form or fashion since 1996. Now, I saw a video the other day, and it's going to be put up in the corner here uh, by another YouTuber, and it just reminded me of how much... I loved this particular bit of content that came out in the mid-90s that was around Star Wars. You know, back in the 90s, and, and I was only about 9, 10 years old, so I didn't really realize everything that was going on, but Star Wars was dying off. I mean, the initial craze of Star Wars was at the end of 70s through the early 80s. You're talking about 10 years... And the craze of Star Wars was finally dying down and almost being like there was no no existence of Star Wars being talked about. And George Lucas being the marketing genius that he is, <laughs> found a way and worked with some very talented people to promote a Star Wars movie without pr making a Star Wars movie. And that was Shadows of the Empire. Now, Shadows of the Empire, probably a lot of people my age remember the Nintendo 64 game of the same name, where you played as Dash Rendar, going to rescue Han Solo from Boba Fett, or attempting to rescue him from Boba Fett before Boba Fett got Han Solo to Jabba's Palace, yada, yada, yada. The rest is history. Fantastic game. For the time, it was revolutionary in so many ways, and it was only on the Nintendo 64, and it came out on PC. I played that game hours upon hours upon hours when I had my Nintendo 64. And one of my favorite things was riding the swoop bikes. You know, back then, that was something new. We knew it was speeder bikes, but swoop bikes, what are those? And I always thought it was really, really cool. It also gave us our first taste of actually being in the Battle of Hoth. It was just so much of that game was phenomenal. But this story, I know a lot of people are going to sit here and say, oh, the story is a little, you know, not great. But introducing a new character like Prince Shizor, 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 whatever, <laughs> you introduce a character like that, and then you go and uh, give us a Dash Rendar, which is a nice departure from Luke Skywalker's story in the original trilogy, and giving us a character that's similar enough to Han Solo that we can get behind because fans loved Han Solo in the original trilogy. So that was also a lot of fun. You also gave us a really cool ship that was very reminiscent of the Millennium Falcon, but not quite the Millennium Falcon, still pretty cool in Dash Rendar's Outrider. So that game and that story as, as a whole, I felt was really, really freaking awesome. It was really great. And the fact that we got to play it in video game form was, was great as well. It wasn't until much later, when I was in my teens, that I discovered that there was a book that actually came out prior to the game that was Shadows of the Empire. So, of course, I had to read the book, and, you know, it dives into the story quite a bit more, and you, you get more of the background of what's going on, what Prince Shizor is trying to do, and, uh, you know... With Palpatine and Vader in the mix, and so there's that backdrop. And in, in typical George Lucas Star Wars fashion, 
you know, you had the political undertones and political background of, of the story that was going on. It was, it was essentially setting up what to, what to expect the prequels are going to be in a way. It's, it's kind of brilliant. But the sad part is, in 2014, when Lucasfilm was you know, being kind of reorganized by Disney after Disney purchased them in 2012, you know, Lucasfilm and Disney decided to do something that I know a lot of fans were upset about, I, I myself, and that was where they eliminated... The expanded universe canon and they said look that is now all legends the only thing that is going to stay true and and what is built off of are the six movies and the clone wars that was it everything else outside of those was not canon legends and that included shadows of the empire now we have had some name drops of different characters and we've even seen one of the characters pop up in the final season of the Clone Wars, but there's been no real connection to the the Shadows in the Empire story since its elimination of the actual canon in 2014. Now, I'm a little upset by that. I think that that is something that they should have kept canon because when you really think about it, out of everything that, that they, they took away, that was the one piece of, of, of story that I felt expanded what the original trilogy was. It gave us a little bit of insight of what happened between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And I really enjoyed that. I thought that it was a, it was a cool take, a cool way to do that. And it's no longer canon. But why does it have to be? I, I've been sitting here since seeing that video that I, I put up in the corner a bit ago, I, I, I've been sitting there and thinking, like, I can't think of anything that negates Shadows of the Empire being able to be canon. So, why don't they just make it canon? But rather than bring the book back, rather than re-release the game, why don't we get Dave Filoni to get with his ragtag team of specialists when it comes to what they do with Star Wars animation and give us a Shadows of the Empire cartoon, animation, animated story, series, what have you. Like, why not? I, like, really think about it. You know, Bad Batch, I, I thought it was only going to be one season. Some people are saying it might actually go on for a couple seasons. But what animation do we have to look forward to after Bad Batch? And you can do a Dash Rendar series. Why the hell not? You could pick up Dash Rendar prior to the events of The Empire Strikes Back. And then, and then, you can have these original trilogy moments play out on screen again from his point of view. So we know he's at the Battle of Hoth. Let's see the Battle of Hoth again, uh, Hoth again, but this time with the technology of 2022, 2023, 20, and of course it's going to be animation, but let's see it from his point of view. Let's see him go on the hunt for Boba Fett, trying to find Boba Fett to save Han Solo after he's frozen in carbonite. Hell, let's not even do animation. Do a mini series, do a limited series of live action. Why the hell not? You have a character for Han Solo, on the narrow right, you had him cast, you can use him again. They may sit there and say, oh, we'll use the, the technology they used for making Luke look young in The Mandalorian. No, I bring in someone like Sebastian Stan who looks like him. He doesn't need to have a big role, but he could be have a minor role where he pops up here and there. Like, there's, there's ways that they could do it, and it would be embracing the past. 
they embrace what is what has come before that fans have loved and they say look we can't bring everything back but this is something we can improve on the story a little bit but Shadows of the Empire to me like I said maybe it's just my nostalgia maybe it's just that I, I, I enjoyed playing that game so much when I was a kid that uh, you know I sit here today thinking man how, how amazing would it be to to once again get a chance to uh, live that story. But then again, I sit there and think about it, and the story was very Star Wars, more Star Wars than the sequel trilogy has been. You put somebody in charge of it like Dave Filoni. You give that to him and let him run with it. And I guarantee it would be a massive success. It would be a huge hit. I just don't understand. Like, there's nothing that sits here and says, no, we shouldn't do that. Because it would be a big hit. Completely. But that's it, guys. I want Dave Filoni to embrace the past. I want him to do Shadows of the Empire and all that jazz. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And I will talk to all of you later, so may the Force...